Good afternoon to all of you on European time. Good morning to the rest of you. Uh, this is the LANA Group Beyond Modelling webinar, and we are now ready to start, I believe. Firstly, I'll start with a quick introduction to myself, and then explain a little bit behind the thinking and the rationale behind this webinar, take you through some of the tools, techniques, approaches we use in this particular area, uh, share with you some of our experiences, uh, and uh, that should take us around 20 minutes or so uh, to get through each of those. But if I start just by introducing myself, uh, my name is Kevin Sheehy. I'm a senior consultant at Lana Group based uh, in the HQ uh, in the United Kingdom. I've been carrying out simulation projects for longer than I'd remember. I care to remember, certainly over 20 years covering um, many sectors, traditional simulations such as manufacturing, energy, transportation, logistics, which uh, I'm sure many of you have, uh, have uh, been involved with, and also less traditional um, simulation areas such as health, the public sector, policing, justice, etc. I've done projects in that time ranging from a few days to many months, and I'm one of the LANA team that has done hundreds and hundreds of projects over the years. Um, one thing I've found that I'm always learning how to do things better, uh, seeing how others do this certainly helps me. And hopefully this webinar will help you by exposing some of the t tools and techniques we use, uh, some of the good practices we use to generate effective results and basically to make our simulation projects successful. So a bit of background and overview. Um, you may ask the question, um, why have we chosen to do a series of seminars under the theme Taking Simulation Beyond Modelling? Well, at a recent Witness event, we asked um, the attendees at that event in a workshop just to feed back to us the critical success factors that they have experienced with simulation modelling projects. And we were, weren't quite sure what to expect uh, um, in this area. So take a minute. What would you say uh, if you were if, if you were pre presented with this question? Uh, we expected a, a lot of answers around the technical and the modelling side, but we also got a number of answers uh, on the less technical side. Take a look at through through this list and some of the things that did get fed back to us. Uh, clear objectives, key critical success factor, defining the problem, customer commitment, clear on the data and what it is we're going to model, uh, managing the customer, managing the data, being clear on exactly what it is that we were delivering. Um, customers often ask for things but don't realize they've got a role to play and some contribution uh, to the process as well. Planning was a key theme that came out in the workshop understanding the process you're modeling, making sure you have the right data in place, the right people are involved in the project. Going back to the customer side again, uh, need ownership involvement from the customer. A uh, number of comments around the way to go about building the model piece by piece, breaking it up into small pieces, etc. And one thing that came across when we looked at the list of things that have been generated by our um, attendees at this uh, event was that not many of those revolved around actual technical modeling. It didn't rank very highly in terms of the critical success factors. Recognizing the challenges you face, it got us thinking, well, how can we help? We've done, as I mentioned in my introduction, hundreds of projects. Some have gone very well, some not so well. Uh, not necessarily all down to modeling, either the good or the bad. So the aim of this second webinar in this series was to share some of the tools and techniques that we've used and that have evolved from delivering some of these projects. I'm sure many of you will be familiar uh, with some of these tools. Uh, some may have similar or slightly different approaches and I'd be very interested in any feedback in this area. I'll put my, web, uh, my email address up at the end so I would welcome any comments, feedback on, this sort of, on these sort of tools and techniques you used. So, so what we decided to do to try and help make our, our customers, our witness users, more successful in the simulation was to share some of the methods that we employ for executing simulation projects better, faster, and delivering the maximum value for the businesses that we're involved in. 
In addition, we hope to provoke some thought, some dialogue hopefully, and above all hope that this will be helpful and useful to you guys in your day-to-day -day, uh, um, work and uh, in, in your day-to-day -day modeling exercises. So moving on, what we try to do is put this into context. Basically, we start at modeling and the webinar we ran a couple of weeks back, very much focused on the modeling and particularly the experimentation aspect of modeling. It was quite technical, but wrapped around this, the project management was identified in this event as a key area uh, that influences the success and how quickly projects are actually completed. Uh, and outside that, the whole customer, internal, external customer um, interface was critical. And more will be coming up on that in a future webinar. But this webinar, we want to very much look at projects, how to control them. Um, keen to hear what, as I've already mentioned, we want to hear from you. So let us know your thoughts on, on how you control and man manage projects going forward. Uh, and basically what I want to do uh, for the bulk of this webinar is share some of our um, some of our approaches, some of our tools, some of our techniques uh, that we use uh, to, to, to help influence the successful outcome of a project. Uh, you can see on the screen, hopefully, some of the um, tools, methods, techniques that we used. Some of them are suited to large projects, some smaller, some both, uh, most both in, in effect. Uh, and what we try and do is provide a structure for navigating a way through a project, checklists to ensure things aren't forgot forgotten, all about make sureing, making sure that the project is successful and delivers what we want it to deliver. You can see through the list, I'll talk a little bit about approaches and methodologies uh, in the first two. I'll talk a little bit about some of the um, subsets of those, some of the in, uh, key milestones in each of those first two in terms of, of how we manage things, overall checklist, and what to do at the end of a project. Also finish off by talking a little bit about modeling levels uh, uh, and the level of detail that we go into uh, when we're building models and how we decide ultimately. So if I start off by looking at the project approach and just click through, Typically, on the modeling side, it will encompass uh, the sort of the key three steps, if you like, the data, the model building, testing, and then running through and doing experimentation. And as modeling specialists, by our nature, our focus tends to be on this part of the process. Build the model, get it done, get the data analyzed, get it in, get it tested, and then run through a series of experiments uh, to, to get to the, the end point within the project. But just as important as that is the setting up and finishing off of a project. And a lot of this is influenced by the style of the project itself. So looking at this, you know, how we set up at the beginning, uh, often we'll do for more complex projects, a scoping study, uh, which will be a mini project in itself, which will go through understanding the objectives and getting into the, uh, the detail of exactly what it is our client wants from the project. And at the end, hopefully, we'll deliver exactly what it is we set out to deliver, and as appropriate, may even hand over models or do more training in the use of the models as appropriate. This is a diagram I often use where, when in a proposal or in a setting off of a project, along with an explanation of each stage, uh, and importantly, the expectation of the customer at each stage. We all have customers, whether they're internal, external, or even yourself. And what we need to make sure is we deliver and manage the expectation of the customer at each stage. Now, again, we'll come back to some of that in more detail as we go through some of the more detailed tools within the, uh, within the approach. If I move back and then look a little more detail at the methodology or the approach that we'll typically use uh, in a project. So if I click through there, you'll see a number of bubbles on the screen, a number of stages from preparing and setting up through modeling, through completing and finally delivering the project. And at each stage, there's a number of key things, key considerations 
we'll actually go through in making sure we set ourselves up for success when it comes to uh, the project. I'll talk a little bit about some of them in more detail. I'll go through some of these now in, 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 a, in a higher level of detail. A lot of information behind each of these. If at the end of the, uh, the session, any of you would like more information on anything you've seen, obviously get in contact and I'll be able to furnish you with those. But I'll talk a little bit more about the pre-visit information and the, scope, the scoping study, uh, the discovery and scoping uh, as we go through. But let's have a look at some of these in more detail, the model definition and objectives. Key here, uh, I guess I'm preaching to the converted here, is to agree objectives and targets with the clients. This is the time in the project to resolve any conflicting interests, confirm and clarify any ambiguous objectives, targets, determine any constraints uh, on the achievement of the project uh, as we go through it. I guess in our eagerness to please, sometimes there's a temptation to say yes to everything. Uh, and that comes back to haunt us later. So it's key at this stage to be absolutely uh, as clear as we can when we set out. One of the things I'll often set up at, the, at this stage as well is a communications plan. How often am I going to talk to the client? Is it going to be daily, weekly, monthly? Am I going to be on-site, off-site, etc.? Again, it's all about setting yourself up uh, and having a clear, um, uh, clear expectation set with, with the client. Talk a, a little bit more about launch and model strategy uh, later on. But let's think a little bit about the data. That's always one of the challenges within a project. And within the scope, when we set up the project, we'll typically decide what's included, what's excluded, and the level of detail and how flexible the model needs to be. Uh, but what are the key required inputs is one of the things. Who's going to collect the data? When are they going to collect it? And at this stage here, certainly, in the planning uh, stage, I'd be looking at actually uh, producing a data collection plan with timescales, etc. Also at this stage, you'd be starting to plan or design the model structure. It's very easy with a tool like Witness to dive in and start building, but uh, it's very clear and very uh, important to actually take some time to structure the model uh, up front before you get into any great detail. The next stage, when you start building the core model, there are questions, how generic do I need to make this model? Do I need to make it very generic um, and set up uh, you know, quite a bit of flexibility in the model? Or are my timescales such that I just need to get to the answer? And all these considerations will be taken right up front at the beginning of the, uh, of the uh, modeling phase. Uh, on the data collection side, returning to that, I uh, mentioned uh, the importance of agreeing who's collecting it and confirming when it's due. Often a lot of the projects that we deal, the delay comes from the lack of availability of data. So getting that out in the open through the first stages is very important to ensuring that we deliver effectively uh, to the time scales that are actually uh, re required. And as we go through the rest of that diagram, getting the data in, the uh, fine-tuning, the verification, validation, ensuring what the model does, what it should do, uh, checking it against plan. Typically, have a test plan at this stage, go through with the client, ticking off different aspects, just making sure it does exactly what it says it does before going on to the scenario testing, where we'll run a variety of different uh, experiments uh, and scenarios. And for those of you who attended the previous uh, webinar, uh, a few weeks back, you'll have seen my colleague going through how to sort of formalize uh, the uh, experimentation side through the Witness Experimenter. If any of you didn't attend that webinar and want more information, again, get in contact with me at the end of the session and I'll be able to take you through uh, uh, some of that as well or give you the material necessary. As we go through the methodology, again, on the delivery side, very key. You know, okay, we might think our work's done, we've built the model, but how it gets across uh, to the uh, client, whether that be through delivering a model or whether it be delivering a report, depends on the nature of the uh, project that you're doing. Um, but again, the key here uh, to actually uh, to, to complete the project well. Agree additional scope might be an odd one that you see there, but what we find as we're going through 
the process of modeling, often new ideas come out as we're going through new problems, different areas to go through. Rather than that, trying to incorporate that into the same project, it's, it's, it's a good practice to actually set down, capture those, and then when you get to the end of this project, uh, agree the additional scope that would be needed into the next phase. So some ideas there uh, and a more detailed methodology. Behind each of these is a lot more information, which I'm happy to share if people, uh, uh, people want to contact me. I'm quite happy to talk through and share more of that. So that's looking at sort of methodologies, approaches at a high level. Let's look at some of the more detailed tools, if you like, that we will use uh, as part of the process. One of the ones I said I'd come back to was the pre-visit questionnaire. What we like to do uh, in a project, and I'd recommend that you guys do the same, is to, to go well armed, if you like, to our first meeting with the client. So it's all about getting that initial intelligence. Um, as appropriate, we're, we will often uh, pull out our template for the pre-visit questionnaire, which will ask a number of questions, just trying to get an understanding of you know, where our client is uh, and the, uh, you know, what sort of information will be expected of them. Uh, and you know where they are in their current readiness for change in, in terms of, of the actual project. So in here, you know, we want to understand the client, the relationships, the managerial structure. You know who it is is going to be our key contact. Who we're going to get the data from. Get an, an understanding of the company if you're external, or an, an understanding of the department if you're doing some work internally just to get a good, you know, a, a good set. Well, okay, what is it that's driving these guys? Where is the opportunity? Where is the value in incorporating simulation within this, uh, this process? As part of the pre-visit questionnaire, it's always a, always a good stage as well, just to gauge and get an idea of what information is readily available. Uh, do they have information on demand and resourcing and machine cycle times and if it's breakdowns, meet time between failures, etc. So just to, at this stage, uh, get, uh, get, get a basic understanding of where our client is uh, uh, so that when we do kick off the project, you know, we, we are well informed and well briefed. Not appropriate in all projects, this tool. Certainly something worth thinking about. Uh, and certainly if you're going to model in new areas, it's something that, that we certainly strongly recommend. Or, you know, it's due, due to geographic reasons that you know you're very remote from the end user or the the end customer you know this can help you know tease out some of the issues before you get started on a project so one simple tool that we use the launch meeting key key stepping stone if you like to start a project i've got on the screen here just an example of one from a small scoping study and the sort of agenda we would follow in actually launching the project Key here is to start how you mean to go on. So simple step, often overlooked. There's a danger that sometimes projects just stumble into life uh, and that you know, it don't really get going with any momentum or that we dive into the detail of the modeling. As a modeler, I can be as guilty of that as anybody else. Uh, but the key is here, okay, let's, let's get, start off on the right foot. So set a launch meeting in the diary, get the key people to that meeting, go through the scoping study of the project that we're going to, uh, to execute, uh, es uh, agree the objectives. If necessary, and there are management from the uh, organization or the department who aren't aware of simulation, at this stage, we may do a quick awareness session of what simulation is and what it can do for you, and then go through the phases or the steps uh, using sort of a, uh, the steps I've put there, or going back to the first diagram I showed you in terms of the steps going through the project, all aiming, you know, with, yeah, you know, getting to that end point, you know, all on board, everybody agreed uh, with the results uh, at the end of the project. So example there of a launch meeting that we might, uh, agenda that we would actually use. Uh, another one uh, that I often look at project management checklist uh, here, uh, just a series of different steps uh, you know, memory jogger, we call it internally within Lana, but it's just, you know, a, a one page with detail behind to double check that we've done everything we need to do. Kick off meeting, launch meeting, same thing. Create plan, I'm going to come back to in a moment. You know, things like agreeing resources from their end and our end, 
you know, uh, the green communications I've touched upon, monitoring progress and the planning side of things I've touched upon. But again, going through those, some of those not appropriate for an internal, more appropriate for external, but again, a number of different uh, steps in the process, referencing some more of the detail that, that I've already mentioned and will go on to mention. One of the things I mentioned at the end in the closure of the project is the actual review side of things. And I'll come back to that as well and go through that and just mention some tips, some ideas we actually use in this particular area. Going back to one of the key areas, project planning. Something that we all say we should do, but how well do we actually do it? Planning could start from a simple Excel spreadsheet uh, with key milestones and dates and times through to more visual, right through to a full Microsoft project plan, uh, you know, which are more appropriate, obviously, to complex projects or projects that perhaps go outside of simulation but incorporate simulation as a simple uh, part of the process. Now, here you can see the key stages, identify them uh, appropriate to the, uh, to the size of the project. Key thing here, it's a living document. Uh, so many problems that do occur in a project occur from uncontrolled changes as you're going through it. I'm sure most of you here have gone through this with a client or your customer, internal customer suddenly asks for something else partway through. But when you get to the end of the project, they've forgotten they've asked for it uh, and uh, it, it's not part of the process. So the key with the plan is to keep it live. You know, with our communication sessions, which we typically set up on an average project on a weekly or a fortnightly basis, uh, one of the things we do will be to pull out the plan and go through each of the steps, review where we've got to, review the way forward, change dates as appropriate. It is a living document. Uh, and it, um, if appropriate, agree and add new scope to the, um, to the uh, plan uh, as, a, as necessary. Also, good um, sort of audit trail for a project. The plan is if your client moves on, your contact in your other department moves on, this will help inform the successor. Uh, so you'll, you'll know where you've got to, what was agreed, what happened when, and so on. So again, people tend to do planning as a one-off exercise. I think what I'm saying here is, no, it's not one-off. It's something you do in every communication with the client just to ensure that you're all sort of on the same page in terms of, of the process. So again, planning, key part that came out within a, um, our event uh, there earlier on that I, I referred to. So that, that, that's sort of the key for the sort of the project itself. Um, when we get to the end, closure of a project is just as important as the starting off. How you complete and finish a project is vital to the su success of the project. Now this may be just doing it, uh, ju just doing post project reviews, which are scheduled as part of our project management che checklist, which I showed you a mo moment ago. So we'll do post-project reviews, but we'll also do something called a CSR, uh, Client Service Review. And what we're doing this for, basically, is it gives us an opportunity to step back and actually do a more formal review of the project as a whole, uh, looking at the technical side, you know, the value for money. So this might be something you'll do a few weeks or a month after a project. Did it actually deliver what it was supposed to deliver? Uh, the people factors, you know, just trying to learn from what we've done. One of the other key aspects of this is it also gives us the opportunity to think about an internal case study or article. Simulation is often referred to as a well-kept secret. It shouldn't be the case. And one of the things we're keen to do, uh, and I'd recommend you guys keen to do, whenever you complete a project, look at the potential for publicizing the outcome of that project throughout your organization. Again, it's something we're always happy to help with, uh, but again, it raises the profile of, um, uh, of simulation within your organization. So that's a post-project review. And so I come back to modeling levels. This is an interesting one. You know, often when you start building a model or you start simulation within your organization, it's very much done at a strategic level. Uh, it'd be the same person building the model as using the model and experimenting with it. Uh, so some of you may be in that boat. But as simulation evolves in an organization, it gets used more and more, and it tends to be used also on a tactical basis. 
And this, guys, often people start to put nice user interfaces around the simulation. It's data driven. You're continually using the model to, re to revisit different schedules, perhaps uh, different configurations, new products being introduced and so on. And often simulation can evolve to a third level where it's actually used much more on an operational basis. Uh, and you take the witness and the user interface to deploy your application to a wider audience within your organization. Examples of this on the LANA website, if, if you wanted to look at some examples of this, are some of the PRISM and the police applications that evolved starting at the strategic level through being used in more tactical to now being used at an operational level to decide manning levels and resource requirements in police control rooms, etc. The number of other examples uh, of those as well, which, which I'm quite happy to share with you. So I've gone through a number of tools very quickly uh, at a high level, um, just taking you through the sorts of things that we do to try and make our projects more effective. Um, as I'm taking things through, uh, as I just sort of pull things back together at the end of this webinar, uh, what we're looking at doing here is just taking up the thinking beyond the modeling. Important, yes, we're all witness users here, witness experts, some of us would like to, to think. But that's not the, the only key to success. Project management is also um, a, a key. Uh, managing the internal customers, which we'll come on to in a future um, uh, session, is also key. As we're thinking about those things, I've had a couple of questions come in through the, the, um, the process, and I'll just quickly, in the last couple of minutes, address some of those. Um, simulation projects with short deadlines, 15-day deadlines. That's a difficult one. That's all about um, setting expectation, managing the customer. The level of detail of the model, absolutely critical in that circumstance. Yet we, we have the same experience, often called in when it's almost too late to influence the decisions. So in this stage, you are typically looking, you know, you've got two, three weeks, you're looking for a high-level model to get you quick answers uh, and sort of ignoring some of the niceties of the Excel and the interface and focusing very much on the detail. If there's no data available, uh, the model is only as good as what you put into it. You can actually do, come up with best guesses, and that's where you'd start with the estimates. But sensitivity analysis also there is key when you're unsure or the data is difficult to extract. Uh, vary some of your assumptions by 5%, 10%. What effect does that actually have on the outcome? If it has little effect, you can be confident what the model is predicting is, you know, is, is good. If it has a major impact uh, by in increasing some of your assumptions and your data by 5% has a major impact on your uh, outcomes, that's telling you something. That's telling you that if you don't manage that part of the process, it's likely to go wrong. So that is a key message coming out. Much more difficult with no data, uh, obviously. Other question that came in was, how frequently will you recommend to review the model with the customer? Depends on the nature of the customer. Obviously, if it's a 10 or 15 day project, I'd probably want to be talking to the customer every other day at least. If I'm talking about you know, a three month project, I'd probably want to do it maybe fortnightly. Uh, even if the, the, the communications are short, these are formal reviews, by the way, not sort of the day-to-day -day discussions and emails with customers, but formal reviews every couple of weeks. If it's a month project, I'd want to do it every week at least. Uh, so formal reviews regularly planned in, uh, upfront in the plan, but then ad hoc day-to-day, -day, there will be um, considerable other um, reviews and contact with the client. Okay, we're coming near to the end of the half hour. So what I wanted to do, first of all, just thank you all for attending uh, this webinar today. Hopefully you found it useful, thought-provoking. It's meant to be the start of a dialogue between yourselves and us. So by all means, please do get in contact with me, come through the help desk or any of your own contacts here at LANA, and we'll be happy to support and help you in, in this area. Thanks again, and uh, good luck with the modelling.